You know, we are so well placed to deal with sustainable food system in academia because many of us in our private life, we do what we can. We think about reduce, reuse, recycle, but food scientists, especially in academia, have this extra great opportunity to, through our work, also have an impact. If we're going to fundamentally change the food that we're eating, the raw materials that we're using, how packaging is made, how food is delivered, all of those come with completely different technical challenges, yet it still has to be safe and people still want it to be convenient. And so you're, a lot of expectations are put on, on food and it's essential to make sure that the challenges are understood or the opportunities and that work is done uh, to be able to figure out what the solutions could be and then work effectively outside the university, which is also hugely important to translate those into practice. We don't have unlimited resources, either on the land or in the sea. And our population is also not limited, it, it's increasing. So we need to do things on the land and in the sea as um, it's not only about efficiency, but it's also making sure that we utilize what we are producing. So in Oregon, we're really lucky to have just fantastic partners in the private sector, uh, in the food and beverage industry, in agriculture itself, who really want to do the right thing. They want to protect water resources. They want to protect biodiversity. They acknowledge climate change and are working for solutions. And to me, it's a real bridge too, and food is a real bridge between urban and rural Oregon. So. I think, I think we're at this kind of nexus of where the right place to be at the right time. I am a part of a large team that looks into aspects of grape smoke exposure and smoke taint in wine. When you have smoke from wildfires that go into vineyards where there are grapes, compounds in the smoke get absorbed into the grape. And then when wine is made, you can end up, if the smoke exposure was bad enough, you can end up with really, really detractors to quality or things that taste very bad in wine so that you can't actually sell that product anymore. It's, it's been such a negative aspect to wine. I'm involved in helping to find preventative ways. So if we can stop those smoke compounds getting into the grapes, and that is with um, Dr. Yan Yun Zhao, we're looking at ways of mitigating it. So of course prevention would be key, but I can't stop forest fires and, and we might not be able to completely prevent uptake of compounds into grapes, but hopefully we'll be able to prevent some of it. Yeah, so I work in the area of hops and brewing, and a lot of my work has historically been focused very much on the beer side. But recently I've been working more and more upstream with growers. And so we're doing work on looking at how hop kilning, that is hop drying, impacts um, hop quality. And there's a, st a sustainability element with that. that we're discovering that the temperature at which you dry hops can influence the speed with which those hops are dried. And certainly the, the, the time in the kiln uh, re is reflective of how much energy is being consumed. And so while we're focusing very much on the quality aspect of hops, we're seeing that there's also another element in there that um, identifies the degree to which a particular variety or a particular drying regime might impact the, the sustainable aspects of that, that process. The, the outputs of this potentially have uh, impact that can benefit the entire industry. And, uh, and in terms of like a, a focus on sustainability, that it has an impact you know, globally. My team, we have been studying sustainable food packaging for over two decades. So we focus on three major areas. One is we are study edible coating as a way to uh, reduce food loss and food waste. Because by using edible coating, you basically apply a thin layer of uh, food material on the surface of food. By doing that, you can slow down post-harvest respiration for fresh fruits and vegetables, or adding a barrier to water and oxygen. It's another way to slow down um, respiration or quality deterioration. Another benefit by using edible coating is we could incorporate antioxidant and antimicrobial agent into coatings to adding additional benefit for uh, reducing food loss and food waste. Here at the Seafood Lab, uh, we have several projects that are engaged with uh, sustainable seafood processing. Um, these are both outreach projects and they're also research, traditional research projects. We've been working for the last four or five years with our uh, processors in the region, um, from Oregon, Washington, and up to Alaska, 
Um, we've been supporting them by uh, holding a seafood uh, wastewater processing conference. Uh, this particular conference is really geared at helping uh, our processors understand the newest technologies that are available. So we invite service providers to give talks so that our processors um, can um, hopefully reduce the uh, organic loads that are going into their waste streams. Another is um, just finished a good fishing vessel practices workshop that's really aimed at uh, receivers and dock workers and buyers. And um, this particular workshop is helping that particular group of people at processing facilities uh, understand what are the best management practices for uh, fishing vessels, also understand seafood quality and the changes that occur, uh, being able to recognize when product is coming in not as best quality as possible, and then hopefully helping them to be able to communicate best practices to our fishermen as well. My message to our industry stakeholders is join us on this journey as we pivot into sustainable food systems. We have a role for industry because they need to keep us relevant. They need to make sure we're on the right track. We cannot go there changing the curriculum without industry believing in the students we graduate. And the same goes for our research. We need to work with industry, not just for funding, but also for relevance. We do not want to conduct research that nobody cares about. We need to be relevant, provide solutions that are practical to help our industry partners. So it's really important we have this ongoing conversation with our stakeholders.